Now, this is a very interesting item coming up, whether you, uh, whether you cook or whether you um, uh, want to um, uh, use your garden more and uh, maybe grow your own food. Uh, the lady that we're going to talk to is a great British Bake Off winner in the past. She's now swapping a spatula for a pair of shears. Yes, as a long-time gardener, Nancy Birdwistle has been transforming her outdoor space in the greenest way possible. Her new book, The Green Gardening Handbook, shows us how to remove chemicals from our food and how to enjoy seasonal ingredients. And she joins us now. Nancy, good morning. Very good to see you. <laughs> good morning, Eamon. Just to let you know, it's snowing here. Oh, lovely. Uh, about the <laughs> uh, that, that's, that's good. What part of the world are you in? Well, I'm in North Lincolnshire. So, yes, I'm an open lass, very much. Yeah. Very good. Um, I was, I'm disappointed. I thought you'd be out in your back garden and we'd be looking at your cucumbers and, and things like that. Um, how, how are you doing? Because, um, you know, the whole thing is now certain people are saying they go to the supermarkets, they can't get the choice that they want. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you and I are long enough in the tooth to remember when all fruit and veg was seasonal and you only got certain things at certain times of the year. Um, what time of the year is it? now in the garden? I mean, what could you be harvesting in the garden now at this time snow. of the year? In the snow. In the snow, yeah. Well, I, I call myself a self-sufficient gardener, so there's very much, very little that I need to go out and buy, um, mm. which delights me. I've got a decent growing space, but now I'm harvesting kale, um, parsnips, leeks, um, the rhubarb's just coming. So, it, you know, you can keep yourself going in seasonal veg that we grow here in this country. I mean, like you said, Eamon, I grew up at a time when we only got strawberries in June and we didn't expect to see a tomato in the shop at Christmas. Mm. Now, you see, I could kill a basil plant. You know, I've just got a talent for, for killing stuff, you know, you know, plants. So if I was to have my own kitchen garden, which is something I would love to do, I think it's a lovely idea, I'd be very much thinking I need all the pesticides, all the chemicals I can get, all the feed and everything to make sure I don't kill it. How do you do it without that? Yes. You, you absolutely just have to trust in nature. I mean, I've grown my own fruit and vegetables for decades, but like so many of us, I relied on chemical fertilizers, pesticides, um, insecticides, slug pellets. I was I used all of those things until probably up until the last six or seven years, and then I realised how harmful they were to the environment because if you're killing a slug. You're also going to kill the bird that eats the slug. And so it goes on and we just deplete our natural wildlife. So, so when you, I leave well alone. So when you're harvesting your kale, you don't have slugs in there? My kale has been left well alone. What's important is how healthy your soil is. Okay. Um, because it, it's just like people. If they're healthy, they'll resist yeah. disease. And bugs, um, and, it, and it's the same with plants. Which brings me then to taste, Nancy. Can you actually? Yeah. Uh, would there be a difference in taste? Um, the difference in taste is fundamental. In fact, a homegrown potato you just cannot buy in the shop because they can't match that freshness. If you dig a potato out of the ground or a, a cob of sweet corn cook it straight away, there is absolutely no comparison. The shops can't do it. They can't harvest it, get it onto the shelf, and you get it home in the time that we can do it if we grow it ourselves. Mm. What's, the hardest, what's the hardest thing for you to grow? And what do you feel most, almost sad to eat? Because you know how long it's taken you to, to nurture. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, um, I once had a go with asparagus and... It, it produced so little spears, so few spears, that I used to just pick them and eat them. So I'm, they never got as far as the kitchen because I was just <laughs> eating it raw. It was so delicious. But for me, really hard to grow. OK. All right. Mm -hmm. That's good. So um, here we are. Isabel was saying to me earlier that um, uh, her... her ambitions in the garden. She's worried this week because of the cold oh, yeah. snap, the cold spell and the snow coming down. Can something like that unexpectedly, especially here we are, the 8th of March, happy birthday, Declan, just remembered that, yes, um, that uh, <laughs> it, can, it can wreak havoc? Uh, 
well, not really. I mean, March, we can expect snow. You know, it's in like a lion and out like a lamb. So I'm not sowing anything yet. And the, and the crops that are out in the garden are, are well tough. You know, my leeks, my kale, it's not going to harm any of those. They're tough. They've been sitting there all winter and my parsnips. So mm. they are used to the weather. But the young spring sowings I'll do towards yes. the end of the month. And could I talk, Nancy, just yeah. about joy? You do all that, and we've talked about better for the soil, better for your health, the taste has improved. Biting into something that you've grown yourself, that you've taken the time and trouble, could you just explain the joy of that? There, there, it, it, it's so rewarding. And one thing's for sure, because obviously food waste is a big problem. Um, particularly in this country, we throw so much food away. If you've grown it yourself, I guarantee you will not waste a morsel because you put so much time and effort in, and love into creating this vegetable, however wonky it may look and not perfect, but the taste is absolutely gorgeous. And Nancy, people will know you from, from Great British Bake Off and you've come up with lots of recipes. You also come up with recipes for products to clean inside the home, which also don't have lots of harmful chemicals. Tell us some you know, things that you use in, in the house, perhaps, that we wouldn't expect. Right. OK, then. Well, um, as, as I say, I started on this green journey about seven years ago. And I thought, if I can write recipes for baking and cooking, yeah. I'm sure I can write cleaning recipes too. So I started to do that and I've covered every cleaning job in my house. Um, but the most difficult was trying to find a replacement for harmful chlorine bleach, which yeah. is a killer. I mean, it's awful stuff. Um, but I came up with a fantastic recipe that I've called Pure Magic. And it <laughs> does what it says on the bottle. It's amazing. It'll destroy lime scale germs, it'll whiten your clothes, it'll kill algae, it'll clean up your greenhouse even. It's an amazing, <laughs> very simple recipe. Lovely, yeah. lovely to hear from you. You're very contagious, I have yeah, to say. Yeah, and full of joy. There are 101 <laughs> tips and ideas in Nancy's that. book. It's the Green Gardening Handbook, and uh, she dedicates it. It's very, very nice. She de get it, dedicates it to her grandparents, who were her, uh, her great teachers in all of this. So um, my first teachers who would have been proud of this book. Good luck with it, Nancy. Lovely talking to you. Thank you, you very much. Thank you, Eamon. Thanks, Isabel. Thank you very much. Thank you.